Hello, my name is Paul McCormick. I'm a professor of neurological surgery at Columbia University. This video will demonstrate the technique of surgical resection of a large dumbbell tumor of the cervical spine. The patient is a 31-year-old woman in her 20th week of pregnancy who presents with a progressive myelopathy. Contrast-enhanced axial MR at the C34 level shows the left-sided tumor with a large intradural component severely compressing the spinal cord as well as a large extraspinal component extending just over two centimeters beyond the lateral dural margin. The small arrow on the right identifies the left vertebral artery, which has been displaced anterior medially by the tumor capsule. Contrast-enhanced coronal MR also documents the extent of the tumor within the spinal canal, C34 foramen, and anterior paraspinal space. For this case, we'll use a Jackson frame with a Mayfield head holder. This will allow us to keep the abdomen free from any pressure and maintain the neck in a fixed, stable position for tumor resection. A midline skin incision and bilateral subperiosteral exposure of the cervical spine is accomplished from C2 to C5 that extends just beyond the lateral margin of the C34 facet joint. The head is to the left. A bilateral C34 laminectomy is performed along with a complete left C34 facetectomy. As you can see, this posterior midline approach with facetectomy provides surgical exposure that extends two to two and a half centimeters beyond the lateral dural margin. The dura is open to the midline. Note that the arachnoid has been left intact and will be opened separately. The dura is tented laterally to the muscle with 4 silk sutures. The arachnoid is then opened separately to reduce epidural bleeding. The tumor is located ventral in the canal, so two dentate ligament attachments are cut to improve access to the tumor. The tumor arises from the ventral C4 motor root. The fascicles of the C4 dorsal root disappear into the tumor laterally as it exits the dural root sleeve. A small 6-0 proline traction suture into the dentate ligament provides additional visualization and access to the ventral canal. The C4 dorsal root will not be able to be saved, and since it obscures tumor visualization, it is cauterized and divided. In this case, since I can't see the afferent nerve of origin, the dissection is begun laterally to devascularize, shrink, and detach the tumor at the root entry sleeve. This is achieved with irrigating cautery and both blunt and sharp dissection. Ultimately, the intradural tumor component will be detached laterally at the entrance to the nerve root sleeve. There is usually a nice arachnoid plane that allows the tumor to be delivered laterally from the ventral cord surface. Irrigating cautery of the tumor surface both devascularizes and shrinks the tumor to aid in the dissection. Again, we continue to systematically work around the root sleeve exit to release the tumor's lateral intradural margin at the root sleeve. Once the lateral tumor margin has been mobilized and reduced to a manageable size through cautery and internal decompression, it can be delivered laterally away from the spinal cord with tumor forceps. This reveals the afferent nerve root of origin of the tumor, which is isolated, cauterized, and divided. In this case, the tumor is originating from the ventral C4 nerve root.
Gentle traction mobilizes the tumor laterally to identify remaining lateral intradural tumor margin attachments, which are systematically cauterized and divided to allow removal of the remaining intradural component of the tumor. The C4 dural root sleeve is now clearly seen, as is the medial aspect of the extradural tumor component. This is carefully cauterized. The lateral dural tenting sutures on the left side are removed, and the dura is flapped contralaterally to expose the extradural foraminal and paraspinal component of the tumor. The key to safe removal of the extradural component of the tumor is to carefully maintain the dissection directly on the capsule of the tumor at all times. This often requires additional bone removal. Here I prefer a small burr. In this case, the C4 pedicle was eroded by the tumor so that the entire C4 inferior facet and pedicle were removed. There are often a series of pseudocapsules representing compressed foraminal veins. Two problems arise when the dissection does not stay precisely on the true tumor capsule. First, there can be excessive bleeding from disruption of the foraminal veins. Secondly, the plane of the tumor will become unclear, which can complicate safe removal. This is particularly important ventrally, where the tumor will often be in contact with the vertebral artery and paravertebral venous plexus. Here, I'm dissecting through foraminal veins to get to the true tumor capsule. Here, we begin mobilization of the medial tumor margin. This is carefully performed under direct visualization with both blunt and sharp dissection techniques. Brisk epidural bleeding is controlled with flow seal. Fibrous adhesions and feeding vessels are systematically identified, cauterized, and divided to allow dissection to progress on the tumor capsule. Gentle traction on the tumor capsule often facilitates the dissection. As the ventromedial margin of the tumor is developed, the vertebral artery will be visualized. The vertebral artery is now clearly visible and is covered with flow seal. Small cotinoids protect the vertebral artery while the dissection continues. Periodic reduction of the tumor mass with an ultrasonic aspirator facilitates visualization and dissection of the ventral tumor margin.
Dissection of the tumor margin off the vertebral artery is now complete. If the dissection remains precisely on the tumor capsule, and you have been effective in isolating, cauterizing, and dividing fibrous attachment and feeding vessels, you can often mobilize and deliver large components of the tumor into your surgical field with a moderate amount of traction with tumor forceps. Here, we did not adequately isolate and cauterize a paravertebral vein. The bleeding, as you can see, can be intimidating, but is usually managed with some suction, flow seal, or in this case, a small piece of gel foam and a little pressure on a cottonoid. Dissection of the ventral tumor margin is now completed with standard microsurgical techniques. The remaining lateral tumor margin is developed to complete the resection. Once the tumor is removed, the dura is closed. I prefer to close the dural root sleeve opening first, since this is the most difficult closure to get water tight. The dura can be closed from the inside, as was done in this case, or the outside, but I prefer the inside technique, often with a small muscle pledget. The midline dura is closed with a running locked 4 silk suture. I valsalve it a 45 millimeters of mercury to ensure a watertight closure, then cover the suture line with duragen followed by a thin layer of gel foam. Foraminal and paraspinal hemostasis is carefully achieved with flow seal and gel foam. In this case, because of the complete unilateral facetectomy, a lateral mass fusion was performed from C2 to C5 with pedicle screws in C2. I used a hemovac drain and closed the muscle with a running zero biosin, interrupted zero vicryl for the ligamentum nuca, 2O vicryl sub Q, and a running non lock 3O nylon skin suture. Patients are kept flat until the morning of post operative day two, then mobilized with PT. The patient has had a near complete recovery of her neurological function by three months following surgery and at four and a half months postoperatively had a normal delivery of a healthy baby boy. Postoperative contrast enhanced MR shows complete tumor resection with no residual tumor. Plain films of the cervical spine obtained six months postoperatively reveal a stable C2 to C5 spinal fusion.